Ready for your game tonight, Ward? Yep. Okay. Oh, they're kind of moved around a little, aren't they? Yeah. Like it's more. Pushed up a little bit. Okay. Maybe more of a circle today. Yeah. Time to study for your test, then you're going to take it some way to Okay? Alright. <laughs> Put away, no cell phones. I want them not even on your desk. Put them away, not on your lap, not your pocket. Put them in your bag for right now because we're going to go to the test. And if I see a cell phone, I'm going to change your quarter to zero. So. 
Just wait, let me put it in my bag because I don't want to see it. Yep, and I'm not joking. Okay. Conjecture is a uh, is a concluding statement reached by inductive reasoning. That's a conjecture. A lot of people try to put valid, or they try to put like theorem. Um, it's using inductive reasoning to come up with a uh, concluding statement. Valid means true. That's all. That's all valid means. It means a true statement. Well, I didn't say this had to be true. We're just using inductive reasoning to make a concluding statement. So there's a big difference there. Theorem is layer. Supplementary, adding two angles to make 180. Segment is a line segment that has two endpoints. Conclusion is the part of a conditional statement that follows the word then. That's a conclusion, hypothesis, conclusion, right? Those are the two parts. Deductive is using rules, facts, definitions, theorems to make conclusions. It's using memorization, so that's deductive reasoning. Um, disjunction is using the word or for compound statement. We'll see those later. Uh, inverse is taking the original conditional statement and negating it. The original statement and then you negate, you put the word not on both parts. Theorem is a mathematical statement that requires to be proven before you accept that as true. Proof is the actual process of showing why or showing how, how you prove it, of showing why it's true. And then uh, midpoint theorem is the uh, theorem where uh, m is the midpoint and then the two pieces are equal. Okay, questions, comments on any of the vocab. Now, how it works every two words is a point. Every two words, you're probably wondering, well, geez, I have like six words missing, but I only had three points off, because it was every two. If you missed just a random word, I don't know how that's possible, but let's say you just missed this word, then you got one point. One word by itself is a point, but when there's like two, you get kind of a three. That's how it works. So, this is probably what happened, you probably just switched. Okay, all right, so it's six points total, because there's you know, 12 spaces there. All right, next. A lot of people did not read the instructions. You had to identify what type of sequence it was, identify the sequence like we did in the practice test, then give me the two, or give me the next number in the blank, the missing value, and the next two terms. Next two after that. So you gotta find the missing and the next two. <clears throat> so this is a typical because they're going down by different numbers or up by different numbers. So down two, down one, um, zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And as you go up, you can add, you can figure out those numbers. Down here, they multiply by 3, added 1. Multiply by 3, added 1. Multiply by 3, added 1. Multiply by 3, add 1. That's how it works. It's a typical sequence. It's not arithmetic. Arithmetic is when they add the same number the entire time. Or subtract the same number the entire time. Okay, questions on that. Some people just didn't read the instructions. See, like, I had a lot of people that just forgot to find the next two. 
two points off. You didn't read the instructions. All right, moving on. <coughs> Okay, four and five, you have to tell me, is that statement true or false? Because I provided the compound statements. These are the compound statements, right? I provided them for you. So, the word and, the word or. That's how it works. And is the little up arrow. For this to be a true statement, like I said, these both have to be true. The figure is a triangle, yeah. And this figure is um, has two congruent sides. Yes, it does. Because that was the picture I showed you. <clears throat> and then for Q, figure has two congruent sides, yes, and then this is the word or, or, not R. So the figure does not have three acute angles, and that is also a true statement. Because that's true, because they do not, it doesn't have three acute, there's one that's not. Okay, uh, so these are both true, and then here's the actual truth tables that prove why. How you do a truth table, P and Q, true, true, false, false, true, false, true, false. And then what you do is, for the word and, they both have to be true to be true. If they're not both true, they're automatically false. Well, this, these both have to be true. Now, for the disjunction, I had to cue the R column, the not R column. And how the not R column works, you just negate the R's. And then for the final one, this word or, only one of these has to be true. You're using these two columns. So the Q and the not R column. If one of them is true, true. One of them is true, true. One of them is true, true. One of them is true, true, that type of thing. So you just look. And then I actually justified like which one it was. So I was looking at like the original statements. Like, this was the statement for this one. Like why it's true. This that proves it. Other people didn't like justify it. They they drew the truth table. They didn't like circle it or mark it. So okay, questions, comments on how to do that. Okay, yeah, we did a bunch of those in class. In fact, that was one out of the book. It was straight out of the book. Okay, all right, number six and seven. Um, two angles are supplementary, then there's some of the angles is 180. That is a true statement because of this. That was actually one of our postulates we had. Uh, it was one of our theorems, in fact, uh, the supplementary theorem, the supplement theorem, which was theorem like 2.3. All right, if an animal is spotted, then it must be a Dalmatian. That's false. It could be any animal. I had a bunch of funny animals. Um, I had somebody put um, cow, dog, ladybug, leopard, cheetah was a common one. And then I had somebody put zebra. Way to fail that question. And I counted it wrong. All right, so moving on. All right, number eight. You had to write two sentences. You had to write two sentences. One had to be the converse, one had to be the contrapositive. Now the converse is where you just take this sentence, you read the if then where they sit, but you switch these two parts. So, if a bird cannot fly, then it's an ostrich. Okay? I don't care if it's true or false. I didn't ask for that. So, if you just switch these two parts. So, if a bird cannot fly, then it's an ostrich. And then the contrapositive for this converse, because that's how a contrapositive works, you negate this sentence. So if a bird can fly, that's putting not in front of this. So not, cannot, means can, right? So if a bird can fly, then you negate the back part, then it's not an ostrich. So you're negating this sentence, both parts. And that's how I made that sentence. A lot of people, I don't know how they did it. I don't know if they, like, if you're writing the contrapositive, if you, like, switch this again, I don't know what happened there. A lot of people did not write the contrapositive correctly. Or they just wrote a random sentence. I had somebody make up their own. I have no idea where that sentence came from. It was something like, if you have hair, good for you, or something like that. It was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> so I, I don't even know where that came from. So, like, I'm not making up something new. That was on the practice guide that we did in class together. So, like, you should know how to do that. That's just not paying attention. Um, so that's. That's just silly mistakes. All right. All right, number nine. Uh, the postulates you have to know, and by the way, you should get these right. You should have had them written on your property sheet. If you didn't, that's your own fault for not taking the time to do it. All right, so pop planes P and Q intersect at line R. That is literally postulate 2 7. Two planes cross and make a line. Okay? Um, lines intersect to make a point. That is 2 6, the postulate. Lines cross and make a single point. Um, when you have a line, it can contain at least two points on it. That's uh, postulate 2, 3. That is different than 2, 1. 2, 1 says that 
if you have two points, you can make a line of it. So this one says you start with a line, there's a bunch of lines on it, so that's two, three. And then um, if you have a line that lies in the plane Q, that's two, five. That says that when you have um, points on plane, the line is also on the plane. That kind of thing. So that was class with two, five. I had some people just like randomly guess one. They just like randomly wrote down numbers. That made no sense. I had somebody write postulate 213. We don't have a postulate 213. <laughs> Good work. So don't just make them up. I can tell them. All right. Okay, questions, comments on this page? Again, these are ones we did in class, especially like practice test day. And you know, like those types of things you should get right. Like you just need to take time to practice or come in and ask questions. All right, moving on. Okay, 10. Now, I made this one a lot longer than you needed to. Um, I'll show you the minimum steps that I was requiring. It is 12 points. It's six steps, six major steps anyway. The six major steps I was looking for. Did you distribute correctly in right distri distribution, where you actually hand the eight to both items, but did not multiply it? If you multiply it, automatically counted it wrong. You were supposed to put it right next to the x and next to the 11. And it was called distribution. Then you switch the parentheses and write associative, where you move the parentheses around, the actual numbers. Then, I didn't, I didn't know if you were going to write multi-identity multi like you multiplied by 1, or if you just went straight to substitution. That's fine. I was The main steps were distribution, associative, and sub. I didn't know if you'd recognize that there was a multi-identity in there. And that's not one that I was looking for. Uh, but you had a substitution line. Then you had to move them around, which was commutative. I had a lot of people that did not put commutative. They put reflexive or symmetric or transitive. Those properties are properties of equality. This is not even an equality problem. This doesn't have an equal sign. So you probably shouldn't use any of those. It's just field properties. So that's commutative. You move things around. Then the other major property I was looking for is distribution. A lot of people put associative, which I said you should not be doing. It's a distribution. And then you had to add those together <coughs> to stuff. So the main properties were these three and these three. So these. That's what I was looking for. And number one, I did the math right. I didn't fail that part. I had a lot of people putting 8 plus 5 is 14. Or or 88 minus 7 is 81. Um, they're both negative. Look at that. That's it. Okay. So silly mistakes. I like to make funny mistakes. All right, moving on. All right. Number 11. Okay. Major properties I was looking for. Like this is six lines. It does take legitimately six lines, and that's the minimum you could take on that that problem. Okay. You had to write down what they gave you. By the way, this is not given. This is what you're trying to prove. I had, I had somebody put this on every single line. They had x equals 10, x equals 10. It was given, then they made up some property, x equals 10, made up some property, made up some property, made up some property, and then they got to the end and they said, prove it. <laughs> Doing the work. I can make up better math than that. So, all right. So given that, right, I redefine what that means. It means that they're equal. And then what I did is I went over the picture, and I just took those things and plugged them in. Like DF is 11, and EG is that 2x minus, or 2x plus 9 or minus 9, whatever you want to call it. I think I put plus would have been minus. And then what you have to do is you have to add to both sides, which I, the fact is I actually wrote adding. I added to both sides, so I don't know why what I did there. So I added the 9 to both sides. And then divided both sides by 2, so that's the division property. And then all I have to do is switch the answer around, which was symmetric. So these are like the main things I was checking for. Did you actually like divide both sides? Did you add to both sides? Did you do symmetric in the end? Because you had to do symmetric, by the way. You had to. Because at some point, you had to switch this around to get it to look like that. Because the way that I gave it set up to you. So you had to know you had to do symmetric. Now, I didn't check for the dots or anything like that. That's not a crucial thing. It's just a marker that we use. But there were six major lines. And I tried to pick an easy one. That was the one that we did in class. So it was one. In fact, I think this is one of the problems we did in the homework, and it was in notes one day. So that's a, that was a simple one. Okay? Moving on. All right. Now, number 12. 
There was a ton of properties. I just picked some of them and I wrote them down there. You had to show me how did you get how did you get the problem? So maybe you told me the numbers for one, two, three, and four, and what was the theorem you used. That was it. It wasn't a proof. I had somebody try to do this proof and it was super long. All you had to do was tell me the numbers. So two and three are complementary. That means they have to add to make 90. Okay? So these are making a little box on the center. All right? They said angle one and four are the same. Okay? So those angles are equal. And this makes a straight line because they have little arrows there. And um, then the last thing, angle two is 28. Okay, fair enough. So that's a 28. So if these have to add to make you know, 90, so then that means this had to be 62 because they, these have to add to make 90. And that was a complement theorem. That was theorem 2.4. Okay, so if that's one you thought of. And then the other two, since these are equal, this makes a straight line. So this, all these should add to be 180. So I had the I had one plus two plus three plus four is 180. These are 26 and 62, or 28 and 62. These are the same. So there's two x's there. Subtract the 90 across, divide by two. Well, x should have been 45. And I had some people like they figured out the math, like what, what they had to add up to these would make the same number. I had some people like yes, we check. Okay. <coughs> so one and four. But I had somebody that try to say that, like this was 62 that was 62 this was 20 that was 50 like they're making up their own numbers which i don't know how they made up their numbers because they didn't add to make 180 and then number two how do you get angle two wrong uh. <laughs> we gave it to you like that that's an epic fail you get angle two wrong they printed it for you way to snooze through that one all right. So, all right. But there's you get there you go. Now remember, you have you have a week from today if you want to retake. But that means you have to just come in the morning. We review it. You know what you missed. We do a couple examples of problems you're not quite getting. But you have a week from today. Actually, hey, I'll give you until the end of next week because I know we have this we have uh, Thanksgiving break. So I'll give you the end of next week by next Friday. You have to retake this if you want. Okay. All right. I like your test, please. <laughs> so remember, you have a week, week to figure out if you want to retake. So by the end of next Friday, if you're going to retake, you just walk in the morning. You don't need to email me or talk to me. Just show up in the morning, and we'll we'll go through the process. Okay, uh, let's see, you want to turn on the lights, do you want to go down and grab those other two yahoos that are uh, in the, I think they're in uh, Hunter. Okay. So today. Okay, today. We're going to review what we started yesterday. So, like, if you're gone, like, Trend, she was gone yesterday. I want to make sure we review some of those angles that we talked about, like corresponding angles, or alternate interior, or alternate exterior. I want to do a quick review of those today. Um, I'm going to give this, we're going to go through two problems, and once we're done with my two problems today, we're done for the day. Make sense? So very easy. Okay, now I am going to give your group a little name tag, so, um, so your group will have a certain angle to find here. You guys are going to be exterior angles. You guys are going to be interior angles. Alright, you guys are going to be alternate in X.
All right, so, all right, so just like we did yesterday, we're going to do a quick review of all of our angles. We're going to do that little thing where we go around the room and I'll have, like, your group will tell me what angles fit this certain picture. So that means that the reason I want you to be in groups so you can discuss it. You can see kind of what you're missing, what you don't understand, that type of thing. <coughs> Everyone in this room has a different type of angle. There's even that, that bonus category that we talked about yesterday that we haven't talked about in this chapter yet. It was in chapter two and chapter one. All right, so let's jump right into it. So the examples, we're gonna go through group work. And remember, your group is to identify the specific angles from the picture that's on your little, your little stand. Okay? All right. So, now, we'll go through the first one. Maybe you'll get some sense, and we'll do a second one, and then we're done for the day. Very nice, very easy. All right, so here we go. So, the first one. So, again, we're going to use the lines on this picture, and we need to know, the first thing we need to know is which one is the transversal. So, here's my picture. Okay, so we have a bunch of angles there. You can see, and we have eight angles. Okay? And all of them are labeled this time. All right. So, now... We need to know the transversal. On this picture, the transversal that we're going to use is letter C. So letter C is the transversal here. Okay, because it's going through what a transversal is, if you don't remember, it's a line that goes through two others. So definitely letter, letter line C goes through two lines. Okay, so now, one of your groups in this room is interior angles. One of the groups in here is exterior angles for this picture. One of those groups is alternate angle, so there's alternate interior, alternate exterior. There's the same side interior. There's the same side exterior, and then one of the groups is corresponding, plus I do have the bonus group. Okay? All right. So I'm going to give you two minutes. Talk amongst your group. See if you can figure out what angles up here, which numbers, stand for your certain card that you have. You can talk out loud, your group, none of your groups are like repeat, so you're by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Talk to yourselves, figure out the numbers that apply to your angle. Okay, one more minute. One more minute. Figure out your numbers on that picture that apply to your angle. I'm going to call on each group. Then we're going to rotate the little stands around. We're going to try another picture. I'll wait you actually join I was wondering how that was going to go. Alright. Okay. Here we go. Alright. So, where's my interior angle, people? Okay. Alright. So, on this picture, can we identify if this is my, you know, my transversal, which angles, which numbers are interiors? 3825. Okay. This, that's good. These are the interior angles. Now, why? They're, they're sandwiched between the two lines. So they're inside. It's like a sandwich, right? There's a sandwich in between. Now, if your card on your on your group has interior written in, on it, like a alternate interior or same side interior, you can only pick from those four numbers. Three, two, eight, and five. If you pick any other number, you're wrong. <laughs> That's how it works. Okay, so very nice, very good. Exterior people, where are you at? One, four, six, and seven. Well, duh, it's the ones I didn't circle. The ones on the outside of the sandwich. Okay, so now, if your group has a little card that says something like alternate exterior or same side exterior, then you need to be picking the numbers 1, 4, 6, and 7, because that's the, the exterior angles. Okay, so that's good. All right, now, in this room, do we have an alternate interior? 
Okay. All right, gentlemen, what do you got back there? Three and five. Three and five. That's good. that's a great example of alternate interior. They're alternating sides of the transversal. They're in the inside. They're not touching. Keep going. Two and eight. Two and eight. These are alternate interior. Again, definition of alternate interior. They're inside angles, interior. They're alternating sides of that transversal letter C, and they don't touch each other. So that's like two and eight, three and five. They're crossing each other. Okay. All right. That was perfect. Alternate exterior people. Where do we have them? Is that that weird bonus? Oh, okay, we do have it. alternate exterior. What do we got? One seven, four and six. One and seven are alternate exteriors. They're alternating sides of the transversal. They're not touching each other. And four and six. That was good. Okay, do we have a same side interior group? Or is that that weird bonus group? Okay, I'll do that one. So same side interior. That'd be like three and eight. They're on the same side of the transversal. They're interior. And then my other group is two and five. Okay, so that's same side interior, they're right. in the inside, they're next to each other. Okay, all right, same side exterior group. Back there, what do we got? One is four and seven is six. Nope, eight. Four, four, seven, one, six. Four, seven, one, six. Yeah, that same side exterior, they're on the same side of the transversal, and then one and six. That's the same side exterior. And then, where's my last corresponding group? And then you guys have that bonus one. So corresponding angles first. Four and eight. Four and eight. Say it again. Three and seven. And what was that one? Yeah, don't give me those. Just give me four and eight, three and seven. Three, seven. One and five. Two and six. All right. What makes corresponding? One has to be interior. One has to be exterior. They can't touch. And they have to be on the same side of the transversal. So that's why four and eight was perfect. One's interior. One's exterior. They're not touching. They're on the same side of the transversal. It's perfect. Four, two, and six. That type of thing. All right, now, that group also had vertical. So what are vertical angles on that picture? Eight and six. Or? Five and seven. Three and one. Okay, those are good examples. All right, take your cards. Let's rotate three spots. Rotate three. And we're going a big clockwise motion. So clockwise, and let's try to have that bonus group go somebody. So some group in here might have two. So some group might have two in their hand. So. Oh, you guys have two. Okay. Hey, does everyone group have one? You guys doesn't have one? Gentlemen, you want to give one of yours to the ladies here? All right. Okay. All right. So does every group have one? I know there's one or two groups in there. Might have two, maybe. Okay. All right. So now that we now that we have uh, we have our groups. All right. We're gonna go on to the last picture. This is the last one today. Okay. So I'm gonna go a new picture. All right. Here we go. Different picture. Cause we gotta move on. We only have that one. In. All right. So here we go. So again, these are the lines across. We need to know our transversal. Okay, so we have a crazy picture going on here. There's like 12 different angles. They're all numbered. The transversal for this picture that I want to use, I want to use transversal Y. That's our transversal this time. Now, for those who don't understand that, you need to know your transversal. Because the transversal has to hit the angles you can use. So that means I may not be using four angles up there. I'm not going to say which four. Okay? All right. Go ahead. Figure out your group. Figure out your angles for your particular group. And again, the groups are interior, exterior, alternates, same side, and corresponding. And then we have that bonus that's vertical. Say again. Alternate. They're alternating sides of the transversal. It's like top and bottom of the transversal. <laughs> Yeah, give me about three minutes here. Three minutes. You may not need it, but I'm going to three.
Other than that. Okay, there you go. Okay, that should end every group. Did I miss a group? Perfect. I'm going to take my little cards back. You are done for the day. <laughs> and no more. So, happy Thanksgiving to you. Okay, if you can go talk to Atletico, you better go do it. If, if you have to. Okay, are you going? What are you talking about? It seems to be a common thing for the world right now. I'm back. I finally got my back. Sadie. Uh, uh, Macy was injured. So, hey, if you know the black book, you'll we'll say, you might remember. I'll just draw the board for right now. And we can even walk around the room. Oh, okay. So, room has a basketball court? So, if you don't know black, um, really? Oh, well, no, no, I don't want to use that. We'll walk about it. So, no one got it. No one got it. No one got it. We might need that today. It's, 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 it's,